I'd only draw their fire and endanger your life. This is unbearable. The whole town terrorized by a handful of towers. And nobody man enough to stop them. They're dangerous men, man. I don't think they're so dangerous. Marshal, Colonel. Better report it to the mayor as usual. That's right. Come on, boys. Let's get him to the doctor. There you are, Mayor. We got to fill that job. Can't open the bank until we do. Might as well try to get someone to wear a bullseye in a shooting gallery. It took me two weeks of earnest endeavor to inveigle this last man into accepting the position. It's just impossible to get a man to fill this job of marshal. How would you like to wear this, Ed? No, thanks, Mayor. I got a wife and family back east. Bad enough having them robbed a bank when I'm insured. But until this town has a peace officer, I can't get insured. Someone will rise to this occasion. Every emergency brings forth a great man. When this country needed saving, who was it stepped forth from obscurity and saved it? Abraham Lincoln. Howdy, Barkey. Brady's the name. Buffalo Brady. Oh, yeah. There you are, Mr. Brady. Sealed in a volcano and aged in a rattlesnake's den. I know what you buffalo hunters want. Buffalo hunting days is over. We hide butchers kill them all off. What? That's good. Another? Can't. I'm broke. I won't be for long. I aim to make me a fortune trapping. Oh, I'm a sly old fox when it comes to trapping. If I had me a hundred dollars for supplies, I'd clean out all the fur in Arizona. So you're looking for a job, huh? You gents seem to speak my language. Can you shoot? Well, I... Not bad. How would you like to make a hundred a month? If it's murder you want done, I'm a law-abiding man. You can take this job and be more law-abiding than ever. Say, is there any special trouble going on in this town? Tut, tut, my friend. You must have noticed as you rode down the street the serene peace of Apache City, our salubrious climate, and the fame of our gold and silver mines are drawing strangers from all over the world. This job will soon be taken, so uh, what do you say? I'd like to earn that hundred dollars, but the job's yours. And it's permanent. Permanent? Give you two to one. You keep it the rest of your life. Where and when do I get that hundred? Come over to my bank. I'll be right over. The end of the month. Meantime, I'll give you a cabin to live in, rent-free. Congratulations. Marshal. Marshal? That's right. And I'm sure that your conduct in office will win you the reputation of another Abraham Lincoln. Marshal.
Howdy, boys. I'm the new marshal. So you're the new marshal, eh? My name, Tulliver. So is mine. We're all Tollivers. Yeah, I I hear to you boys. Well, I'll I'll be heading back to town. See you again sometime. Yeah, maybe once too often. Yeah. Well, so long. Young fella, here's where you get off. Thank you very much, sir, for the transportation. How much do I owe you? Nothing, son, but you better be careful. This is a tough town. Thank you. I'm the town marshal. Can I help you any? My name's Bob Marlowe. Glad to meet you. Could you direct me to a hotel? Why, they rent rooms here. Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to rest very well. They stay open all night, don't they? Yes, I reckon they do. Say, I got just the place you want. A nice, quiet little cabin that I'll rent to you reasonable at a bargain. Just what do you call reasonable? Well, well, you sure got a shrewd head on them young shoulders. Let me see. How about 50 a month? Well, I couldn't afford that. Wait a minute, I'll make it 40. 30, then. That's still too much. Well, 20, how's that? That's more like it. It's a bargain. Let's have the cash. I want to see the place first. Well, I can go with you, but I'll show you where it is. You follow this street up to the first gulch. Turn up the hill and there she is. Well, how could I get there? Oh, you can borrow Tom Pruitt's horse over there. Well, won't he object? Object? <laughs> Not likely. I got him locked up in the hoose Well, thank you very much. Hold on there. Have you got a gun? Well, of course not. Well, you can't tell. You might be needing one out there alone. Well, goodness gracious, what for? Suppose you was to meet a catamount or a bar. Now, there's a killer, sure enough. Ain't she a beauty? I'll let you have her to bargain for cash. No, thanks. I can take care of myself, all right.
Oh, somebody else got this idea ahead of us. Nope, they've been touched. Money's still there, but we're going to have some tough time of digging it out. <laughs> the rest of the boys sure are going to be sore when they come to get their share of that bank job. It was enough to split between ten and know-how. Oh, I know. Plenty, though, for two rats. Let me see. You better go and look to see if somebody's coming. All right. Not even the squirrel in sight. Yeah. Hey, Buffalo. Do you know anything about Tom Pruitt's horse? I lent it to a friend of mine. Tom won't need it in the hoose but he isn't in the who's go. I let him off on a $10 fine. If you don't get his horse back pronto, he'll be shooting you for a horse thief. A horse thief? Wow. I'll see what I can do. Just like we left it. Well, hurry up, hurry up. Well, if you're in such a hurry, drag it out yourself. Pardon me, gentlemen. Haven't you any respect for other people's property? What's that to you? I just rented this cabin, and I'll thank you if you'll clean up the mess. Goodness gracious. I'm afraid we couldn't be bothered, don't you know? You see, we're about to take a trip, and our horses would be annoyed if we kept them waiting. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'll report this to the town marshal. No, you don't. Sit down. How are we going to tote this stuff? We'll borrow the Tenderfoot's luggage. Bring that bag over here. Who's there? The Marshal. Fire Greeley, what have you been doing? I didn't do it. Two of the worst murders that ever robbed the bank. And dead as a mackerel. But I didn't kill them. So you recovered the loot. Son, this is going to make history in Arizona. It sure is. When we bring this money back to town, we're going to get credit for the greatest exploit since the Earp brothers won the fight at the O.K. Corral. So that's when they shot each other. I don't want any credit for it. Do I look like a killer? You can't always tell by looks. Well, we better be getting out of here before some more Tulliver shows up. Take that on here. You might need it on the way in. They got a lot of relatives these corpses have. But I don't want to wear this. I look like a, a gunfighter. Put it on. You'll find them cartridges mighty handy in case we have to shoot it out with the Tullivers. Oh, goodness gracious. I... You're not going to say I killed those two, are you? You don't need to worry, son. I'll take care of your reputation. 
even if it means I have to take the blame myself. There you are, sir. Splendid. Pardon me. Buck! What's all excitement? I don't know, Colonel. All I heard was two of those Tullivers got shot. Tullivers, eh? It serves them right, Dad. Now maybe you can get some of your money back. Yeah. Excuse me, dear. Wait for me at the bank. Yes, sir. Oh, Colonel, here you are. And there's your money. Thanks to this brave defender of law and order. I'm most grateful to you, sir. How'd you get this money? Yes. Tell us what happened. Well, it was this way. <clears throat> I figured that cabin was a likely place, seeing as how it belonged to the man they stole the money from. So I snuck up and looked through the window, like an old Indian fighter would do, before walking into a trap. Seeing both them bank robbers inside, I pulled my gun and strode to the door. Go on. Tell us how you killed those Tullivers. Me? I never said I killed any Tullivers. You did. I didn't. I said there was two of them dead out at the Colonel's cabin, and I was just going to tell you how it happened. Well, go on. If you didn't kill them, who did? Yes. Who did? Well, I... It was that young man. Oh, no. I didn't do it. Just a minute. I didn't kill anyone. Ah, folks, he's too modest. However, when we opened the door, he jumped in ahead of me. Doc Tulliver fired at him, Jake Tulliver fired at him. Then he drawed both them guns of his and fired so fast, he looked like two lightning flashes at once. His right gun stopped Jake, and his left gun done for Doc. Then they fell, both of them, in their tracks. So, folks, there's your hero, fighting Bob Morrow. Congratulations. Splendid. We're proud to have you here, Mr. Morrow. Gentlemen, Morrow. you don't understand. So you killed our brothers, eh? No, you see, it was like he, this. I, he, he sure did. That's all we wanted to know. Come on, fellas. Hey, just a minute. I'm glad they didn't notice this money. Young man, may I conceal this in your bag till we get to the bank? Why, certainly. That's fine. Oh, Ed! I want to present Mr. Marlowe, my daughter, Miss Carver. <clears throat> How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Marlowe. There's such a thing as being too modest, Miss, and that's him. Why, any other man would go around bragging about what he did for this town today. The first thing you know, he'd be saying he didn't even have a hand in it. Oh, but you did, didn't you? Well, yes, but you see, yeah, he admits it. He ought to be rewarded. I can think of no more fitting hands than yours, miss, to pin this decoration on him. With pleasure. No, please, you see, I didn't. Oh, but you deserve it. Please let me pin it on. Well, Colonel, if anybody wants to know who killed them two Tullivers, you can say it was our deputy marshal. May we have the pleasure of your company at dinner tonight? Oh, I'd be delighted. Thank you. And at that time, we can discuss the matter of the reward. Reward? Naturally. There's a reward for the recovery of the money. Razors in the territory. It's a nice location you have here. Yeah. Did you see the hold up? 
Well, just the start of it. You see, I kind of lost interest when the bullets commenced to fly close. How do you want your shave? Pretty close, please. And you'll get her close. Or my name ain't Razor Tolliver. Tolliver? Yeah, and I ain't ashamed of it. Even if I have got some brothers, it's kind of wild. I suppose you've heard tell about a couple of them getting killed. No, sir, I, I'm just a stranger here. Yeah, well, don't you believe all you hear. I know the shooting habits of them two brothers of mine, and I know that they wasn't killed on the square. The man who did it was a murdering coward, and I'd like to have him in my chair right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'd give him just about the same chance as he'd give Doc and Jake. If I had him here, just a little nick on the throat right there, just about an inch deep, and that... Uh... Hey, I thought you wanted a close shave. Pardon me. Howdy, Bubba. Howdy. Reckon I'm next? Yeah, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Don't mind if I do. Had a pretty busy time today. I'm tired. I reckon you heard about the Tulliver shooting. Yes. Did that deputy of yours actually kill them two men? Did he? <laughs> it was like an Indian massacre. He never gave them fellas a chance. Careful, Mr. Tolliver. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? You're next. I got to go. I, I got to see the mayor. Hey, stranger. What's your business in this town? Oh, I'm just looking around. Looking for work, I suppose, huh? Well, I'll just bet you a dollar against the shave I give you. And I can guess your occupation in three guesses. All right, sir. That's a bad. All right. Now, you just sit here and steam for a minute. While I try and figure you out and strap my razor. Then, mister, I'll be through with you in a jiffy. Just lean your head back. How's that, sir? Fine. Evening, Mr. Milo. Good evening, Colonel. I'll be with you in just a minute. Sorry through the window. I want to have a talk with you. Well, young man, now that you're a deputy, we'll have to get you right enough fit. That'll be fine. Thank you, sir. Well, bye. I want to see you, Colonel. I'll be in first thing in the morning. We'll have lots of good times together. And besides, Dad needs a young man like you in the bank. Say, I'm not cutting in on some other fellow, am I? Oh, no. I've never had any use for the young men in this town. They're all buffaloed by the Tullivers. They haven't any courage. Dad, now you don't have to worry about replacing that bookkeeper who quit after the holdup. I persuaded Mr. Marlowe to take the job. Well, I know he's a fine fellow and I'd like to have him. But being able to subtract Tullivers doesn't prove he's able to add figures. Oh, but he is. I'm sure I could handle the position. I've had plenty of experience. There goes your only objection, Dad. He can start right in in the morning. Well, I'll think it over. Thank you, Colonel. 
Good night. Good night. I'll be right in, Dad. What you doing here, Tulliver? I've come about that Marlowe. Is he around anywhere? Just left. Then listen. I checked up on him when I had him in the chair. And he's a star packer sent here by the governor. You sure? Yes. With a letter of authority. Don't let looks fool you, Colonel. That boy's one of the deadliest gunmen in the Southwest. Why, do you think he suspects? See me at the barbershop tomorrow. And don't be surprised if he's dead before morning. Where's Milo? He said good night. So soon? Yes, he had some important letters to get off on the morning stage. Oh. Important letters, eh? That fellow that shot Doc and Jake will be along here in a minute. He just put his horse in the stable. Yeah? I'll take care of him. Good. Come on, Nate. Fighting, I reckon. Only one report. Luckily, someone shot a skunk. Drink up, Nate. Have one of those, Sparky. Don't mind if I do. I don't know what you're celebrating, but here's how. <clears throat> Leave it. What about another glass? Red will be along in a minute. You've been out and seen that nice, quiet cabin. I suppose you'd like to pay me a month's rent in advance. Oh, I couldn't use the cabin now. I can never think of living out there alone after what happened today. Why, it's only $20 a month. I'll make it 10 No, thanks. I'll put up here at the hotel. You'll find it pretty dangerous. Not as dangerous as living out there alone. Well, if you feel that way about it, better let me give you some lessons. Them shooting irons. Lessons? Ought to be worth ten dollars a lesson. But me being generous, oh, I got a heart as big as a buffalo. I don't want to go to your funeral. So let me show you how to handle them guns. For nothing. All right. And then if you feel like it, you can buy me a drink. Now, the first thing you got to learn is the draw. And you got to do it just like this every time. <laughs> we just took Red to the doctor with a bullet in his hip. Where's that deputy? We've just been waiting for him. He's upstairs in Brady's room. I'm going to even things up. 
What would you do if a bad man came in that door with a gun already in his hand? Well, Buffalo, I'll show you. I must have hit him, Buffalo. What a deputy. He's only been in town one day and he's put four Tullivers out of business already. That calls for a drink and it's on me, folks. Barkeep, set him up for everybody. I'm going to the barber shop. I'll be right back. All right, Dad. Good morning, Miss Carver. Good morning. You're down early, aren't you? I want to make a good impression on your father. I'm sure you will. But how did you get in? Well, I explained to the janitor that I was starting to work here this morning. Oh, I see. We've got to get rid of him and do it quick. He's whittling us down to his size. Tomorrow will be too late, so we'll put him away today. We'll rob the bank again. But tell us we'd have to rob it again anyway. You promised us half the loot and you haven't given us a dime. We let him live. He'll have the goods on us as well as on you. Well, what about it? My daughter's there. You'd better get her out of there before two o'clock this afternoon. How do you make a capital letter? You press down on this key and then you hit the one you want. Like this. Oh, I see. <laughs> Good morning. Who would you like to see? Colonel Carver, miss. Why, he isn't in. Perhaps I can help you. Maybe you can, Miss Carver. I come to see about the reward. Reward? What reward? For bringing the stolen money back to town yesterday. But Mr. Marlow did that. Shucks, the colonel tell you himself that I put that money back into his hands. But I don't understand. I thought Mr. Marlow shot those two Tullivers. That's the story he wanted told. So I up and told her. Fact of the matter is, he didn't have a gun. They had a fight over the money and shot each other. You mean he just wanted to be... Wanted to be a hero to impress the ladies. It's natural at his age. Me? I prefer the cash and let the credit go. Talking about cash, miss, do you think a hundred dollars would be all right? Oh, you'll have to see my father about that. Oh, all right. Bob. I overheard what Buffalo said. And you wanted everyone to believe you were a hero. And let me explain. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to ever see you again. Tulliver, let's not be hasty. There must be some other way. You heard me, Colonel. That bank's going to be robbed again this afternoon, and that star packer is going out of their feet first. That's murder. I can't have that on my conscience. You should have thought of all that before you planned the first robbery and embezzled to help your friends. Now then, you get back to the bank and have that vault open. And the money ready for the boys. I'm not going through with it. All right, Colonel. Have it your own way. But we'll be there at two o'clock. Down early this morning, Colonel. Yeah, how are you? Remember, fellas, we've got to get that star packer. You'll be back here with a posse and wipe us all out. Come 
tomorrow. I wish you'd run up to the gold dust mine and bring back some dust they want to bank. Yes, sir. Now. I'll go after the bank closes. I don't mind the overtime. I want you to go right now. I said I'd wait until the bank closes, sir. Milo, you're through. Get your hat and get out of here. I've got work to do here, Colonel. There must be some reason why you don't want me here. What is it? Tell me, Colonel, a man who's in trouble ought to be trying to make friends, not get rid of them. You call yourself a friend? Don't you think I know who and what you are? And still, I don't want you to get hurt. Take my advice and get out of here before it's too late. Thanks, Colonel, but I'm staying. I might be needing another gun, Colonel. Thanks. Colonel, I want to have a nice, quiet little talk with you. All right, sir. What is it?
Buffalo. If they come through that door, let them have it. I sure will. Colonel, they've blown the ball. Don't open that door, son. It's suicide. Hang out. I'm telling you, we can round up the whole bunch of them and get that money back. Who's going with me? There ought to be one man in this crowd. Buffalo, how about you? Sorry, my authority ends at the city limits. Well, mine doesn't. I've been authorized by the governor to enforce the law anywhere in this state. And I'm deputizing you to go with me. Who else? All right. I'll organize my own posse. I'll round up every man that isn't yellow and can carry a gun. We'll corral this Tulliver gang for keeps. Buffalo, phone every rancher in this valley. We'll pick them up on our way out of town. Wow! Well, 
I can't understand all this hurrying. Well, that star packer's liable to be along here any minute now with a bunch of rangers. And I'm going to be out of the territory when he gets here. Any of you boys who want to stay, it's all right with me. Put that money in one of the bags.
Don't move, Tulliver. I got you covered. Hey, Buffalo. What are you doing down there? I got him. I got him. By Jiminy, he ain't going to get away from me this time. Yes, sir. I cleaned the house for sure. Of course, I ain't saying Marlowe didn't help some. He done right well, considering. Mr. Brady, in recognition of your services to the city today, allow me to present you with a token of our esteem. The leading merchants and citizens take pleasure in offering you this money, $100. Congratulations, Buffalo. Now you can buy that trapping out that you wanted. What? Me waste my talents that away? Me be a low-down trapper? No, sir. Now that I got rid of the Tullivers, I'm going to keep this job. This calls for a drink on me, boys. Come on, everybody, step up here. Hey! Hello, Bob. I want my daughter to hear this, so let's get it over with. You come about that $10,000. I'll tell you about it. I didn't steal that money. I lent it to my friend. And someday they're going to pay me back. It was just a matter of concealing the shortage. I don't know what you're talking about, Colonel. What? You know, I've always wanted to buy an interest in a bank in a growing town like this. You mean... That you have nothing to worry about. So take it easy. Oh. Won't you come in? I thought you never wanted to see me again. Of course I do. 